I want to go back in time before the trial started, before we knew that we were sure there would be a trial, Jeff. It was the month of Tammuz, there were many Fabrengans, and they were difficult Fabrengans to attend because the Rebbe was upset, visibly upset, and he spoke from the depths of his heart, like he always would speak, of course. But it seemed to me that the, the situation, having had described to us the, the situation, that it was a sort of feeling among Siddim of helplessness. What do we, the Rebbe has something on his mind and on his heart, and somebody's got to do something. Nothing is being done. One of the nights, I believe that year, Tovshin Memhe, 1985, was a Nitzche Shavos was Shabbos, was Nitzche the Sunday the Tonis. Sunday night, I'm sitting in my living room with two people. One was my son-in-law, Yisav Baruch HaKain Friedman, the head of Kahos, and Mendel Gunsberg, who to some degree was a Mishamish uh, in the Rebbe's and Rebbe's house. And we're, we're sitting and thinking and talking. And that, that was a time that they were printing uh, the, the Igre Kedish from the Friedrich Rebbe. And Yosef Friedman remembered having seen there something about Svarim in the Krach from Tovshin Memvov. He went to that bookcase, he took it off, off the shelf, he looked in the index, he looked up the letter that he, was, that he remembers having seen, and it was that letter that the Friedrich Rebbe sent to Dr. Alexander Marx, that, who was a librarian, it says in the JTS, in New York, and he was known to be well connected in the State Department. And the Rebbe writes to him, Abakosha, it's a rather lengthy letter, where he describes the library that was sitting someplace in Poland, not exactly sure where it was, that was packed up before he left in, in 1940, packed up in boxes, left in an American embassy or something of that nature. I mean, you can see, you can see the letter is available today, of course. And uh, he asks if he could intervene. And in describing the library, the Rebbe calls it an Eitzir Bolum, a treasure. Ruchush Uma. It belongs to the Jewish people. In some other very weighty descriptions of the Cheshivas of this particular library. And he asks Dr. Marx to intervene to the best of his ability with the State Department to find out, number one, where are the books? And how can they get to 770 to Lubavitch, Chabad Lubavitch World Headquarters? I don't know if he answered the Rebbe. I know that during the trial, somebody checked in the JTS library to see if they have a letter on file. And they couldn't find it. But we found in the Rebbe's Yoman, in his diary, he was very, very organized. Well, he writes every day the letters, that, the names of the people to whom he sent letters in that particular day. And in that day, in Tovshin Vov, the Rebbe mentions that he, the letter that sent to uh, Dr. Alexander Marx. Why was it in the library? It was sent to Marx, maybe he put it, took it home. But the, that letter was sent. It so happens that in the course of the trial, that letter was the focal point of the whole trial. Now, we, we found that letter, it was Sunday night, as I said, and uh, called the meeting of Agudas Chassidi Chabad from Monday or Tuesday, and I brought that letter to the, uh, to the Chavedim of the Vaad, showed it to them, read it to them, and uh, nothing conclusive came of it. I was a little surprised. We had another meeting, and I brought it up again a few days later, this was before the change of the Hanhova And nothing came of it. I showed it to the Rebbe. The Rebbe said I should show it to the Vad. I said to the Rebbe that I did that already. And uh, he didn't respond to that, the Rebbe. So that night, sitting in my house with my, with my, son, my son-in-law and Mendel Gunsberg, I, I, I was, what, what do you do? What's Tutman? So I had two thoughts. 
One was to go to court, and another one was to go to the press. I had, I had at that time a fairly good relationship with all the press, radio, television, print. I had, I had a good yachas. It was, I was involved in it for, for like 40 years in the Rebbe's office, the Mosquitoes. And uh, I don't know, somehow to go to the press was, it, that we, we, we ruled that out. And we remained with the option to go to court. Not knowing what to do, I decided I'll call an attorney that I can trust, that I know well. That was uh, Nathan, not Lewin, Nathan Lewin. Uh, I didn't know at that time that Seth was a partner there. Or, you, know, you were a partner. I didn't know from Seth Waxman. But I knew that. I called him up to his office in Washington. And he says to me that, yes, the, 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 the materials that were stolen uh, were, went interstate to New Jersey. So it's a federal case. That's good because the federal courts are better, they're, they're more reliable, and they're quicker. It's more, it's more, it's, more, it's, it's solid. It's, it's fine, better, much better than go, have to go to a state court. We found out later that's absolutely true. So he says, meet me tomorrow in the office of Shlam Sloan and Dolan. That's a law firm that Nat had a yachas with, affiliation with, at 3.30 in the afternoon. And the day came, I, went, I met up at 3.30 in the afternoon. I told him the whole story. And I said, Nat, I, I'm, I'm tr what I'm troubled at this moment, yeah, may, maybe you'll we'll have a trial going ahead. We weren't sure, even at that moment. But that what's happening and what's upsetting the Reb is that the person, the perpetrator, removed over 400 books from the Rebbe's room upstairs, the second floor, where the Friedrich Rebbe had his, 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 uh, his room was surrounded with bookcase, full of books, and then the basement, where the larger commerce of the library was. Somehow, he knew what books to take, and they were the best books you could have in the library. But Lucanabla, if you know what Lucanabla is, it's very precious, you can't even find it today to buy. For, it's, it's, and it's gone. And he's in touch with book dealers all over the country and all over the world, coming in from Edith Israel and from London, from Europe and from the United States. But people who know books and antiquity and the values and things like that. And he's selling them for enormous amounts of money. And the place is bleeding. The first thing I think we have to do is stop the bleeding. He said yes. So we have to Make, make a uh, restraining, put, take out a restraining order in the federal court. He says it'll take me a day or two to get all the details that has to be done properly, as an attorney should do, of his caliber especially. And I think it was about two days later, he went to federal court. I didn't go with him. He was given, you know, they, you can't pick a judge. They give you a judge when you come there. They, he, he came before a judge, uh, um, Leo, Leo Glazer who said during the, tr the hearing, I understand, he's a book lover, so he knows, he understands what we're going through. And he signed the TRO immediately, and he sent two federal uh, police, federal marshals to New Jersey to take the books out of the house. And that happened, and they put him in a bonded warehouse in the bank, I think it was, that's where he got them from back two years later, in a bonded, uh, a re a reliable warehouse for storage. So, I must say, I left out a very, something very important. Between the day I met, I met Nat Lewin and the day the TRO was filed, for two days, I hadn't told the Rebbe anything about my speaking to Nat Lewin and that I asked him to file a TRO. I could see nothing other than doing that. And, and, and I wasn't sure he could even do it. So I didn't tell the Rebbe. I didn't want to make myself stupid. So I told the Rebbe, once the Rebbe told him what I did. The first thing the Rebbe said was I should call up the Balabosta. The Balabosta is a respectful and very affectionate way of mentioning wife. And I should tell her exactly what happened, which I did. And then, it may have been that time or a few days later, I was by the Rebbe. And I asked them a question about, about this trial business, the legal business. And the Rebbe says to me, why are you asking me? 
I, I, I didn't answer the question. He says, Meshe Rabbeinu Egbe Naman Ag Yisroel, Ad Gedai Gedve En Klal Yisroel, Obe Pinchos, Ad Gedav Opton Vosad Ogotan. I understood what the Rebbe said. Then he said something else to me. I mentioned it here before a few years ago. I didn't keep it a secret. Maybe some of you heard it already. He says to me, Du bist doch gechosef in schwer, in the Friedeke Rebbe. Mestam Egwen Baim, Afabroche, Efshe bei der Bar Mitzvah, which is true, in 1946, Kislev. I was by the Friedeke Rebbe, Fichitis, and I had a broche for my Bar Mitzvah, the whole life. Mimel wird alt sein bei Hatzloche. That was the Rebbe's. Truth and matter is the library really was the Rebbe's collection at that time, at the, uh, in, in, when, when I got the bracha. And so I, I, I decided I'm not going to ask the Rebbe anything unless, he, he, unless, I, unless I really have to. You've got to know what to do with them. Anyways, this was, I don't know if you know that story, Seth. You didn't know it? Yeah. Wow, wow. Okay. I didn't have to waste it. You would have, I forgot it. So now you know. First, I believe. It's interesting that at that time, when things were so uh, out of regular, normal order, the Sunday of one of those weeks in Tammuz, I think it was the week after Shavuot of Tammuz, there was a few of Givirim came to, to, came to headquarters, Chabad headquarters, where the, uh, we, had, we were decided we were going to make a, a group of Givirim should support the work of Machni Yisrael, the Rebbe's work all over the world. They put together three or four Gvirim and three or four Shluchim. I think they're here today. I will not name them, but they know what I'm talking about. And it was that morning, Sunday morning, where the Rebbe called me in. We hadn't given the organization a name yet. The Rebbe asked for, 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 for suggestions what the name of the group should be. And uh, the Rebbe said it should be called Machni Yisrael Special Development Fund. That's the MIDF. It should be MIDF. And the Rebbe is, was concerned about what, who, who was here and what was talked about and what the results were. He asked me the next day what the results were. So in the middle of this whole tumul in Agmas Nefesh, the Rebbe had in mind a day-to-day in Yonim as well. I can tell you this, and I, I, I have a diary, it's no secret, and as I go through the diary for many years, you can see a mixture of discussions in, 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 at one time. What, what, one thing had nothing to do with the other, and some were surprising, some were new, some were old, but it was a blend. It was a blend. And I'll soon tell you something, uh, why, 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 I men why I mentioned this. So the trial started in Yutis Kislev. It was a pretty, was a pretty good omen. And it went for four weeks, five days a week. Sometimes it went for more than five o'clock. But there's mounds and mounds of paper, thousands and thousands of pages, beginning from the period of discovery, from the, the judge set the trial for December 3rd. That was Yotis Kislev in the Jewish calendar. And there was uh, Sept uh, Sep August, September, October, November. There were four, four months, I believe, for discovery. Discovery is a period where each side has the right and the, 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 to, to, to question the other side and to ask for certain documents and prepare certain documents for each side with their positions. I mentioned it, I think I mentioned it last night, but I'll mention it again because it's, it's, it's really remarkable and I can't forget it, that uh, one of the last the, the positions that the opposing lawyers decided to make was the Rebbitson and I asked the Rebbe if we should try to stop it, which is impossible. If you want to depose the President of the United States, he has no recourse. You've got to, depose, you've got to be deposed. And the Rebbe said, it's okay. She'll, 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 she'll be all right with some other adjectives about her potential success. And the day came, we made the condition should be in her living room, dining room actually, in the, on the, in the, Rebbe, in the Rebbe's home at 1304 President Street. And they came with three or four lawyers. We had two or three lawyers. And uh, they deposed her. Uh, it turned out that it was almost close to three hours. I thought it was, I think my memory was an hour and a three quarters, but it was three hours. 
and the kavanah of a deposition is to confuse the witness, ask the same question in different words throughout in different times to, in order to, to be available, to, to confuse the person. That's the whole kavanah of a deposition. And they tried to do it, and they couldn't do it. I never, I, I, I was sat through many depositions in many cases, certainly in this case, and it's almost inevitable, it's almost enticing to say an extra word to show how good you are, but, but, you know, how right you are, that wasn't asked. The, 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 you, you don't do that, you're not supposed to do that, but what, usual witnesses go, are ever on that Aveda. But she wasn't Aveda. Not one extra word did she say. Her answers were brilliant, they were clever, they were smart, and to the point, sometimes that she had to say something that really she wouldn't want to say in her daily life, but she had to. This is a trial over a Geneva. Not only a Geneva, I mentioned last night. The Rebbe's library was the crown jewel of Chabad as far as objects are concerned. And I remember when I was a teenager, after the Rebbe was installed, after Yitzhak, there was talk amongst the elders about what's going to be with the library. And I don't know what went on. I wasn't privy to, it, privy to it then. But I do know that the Rebbe was upset about it. And one time he was offered a key. And the Rebbe said, no, he didn't want to have a key. He wanted to have the key. It was almost by the Rebbe. Without these crown jewels. Decades went by. 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, almost 40 years, and the library is not in the possession of the Rebbe. Until this tragic incident came up in the spring of 1985, Toshin Memhei, where what happened was books were stolen, so there was no alternative. We had to find first who the, who the thief was, and then we found that we had to find out what he was doing with the books that are missing and so on, so, so uh, it, 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 it was a lot of Akbar and Efesh, needless to say. And uh, we, we uh, I said this was during the, back to the Rebetzin. When they finished the questions, and they saw that they weren't getting any place with her, not only weren't they getting any place, but her, her testimony was detrimental to their side. They thought they would have, the Rebetzin was an heir, if it was possession to the Rebbe, to her father, uh, the question is, who did the books belong to? So the last question they asked, and there was a videotape being made, they asked her, Mrs. Schneerson, tell us, who did the, who, who did the book, books belong to, belong to? To your father or to the community? And she said, my father owned nothing. Everything he had belong to the community, to the, to the Anash. And they threw their pencils down on the table, and you, were, you weren't the Seth, you were you was there. You remember how frustrated they were at the end? Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Thank you, Rabbi Shabdiv. That he, the Rebbe himself, and whatever he had, belonged to, belonged to, to, to the Chassidim. Uh, that is a very poetic statement, and I tell you, I, I, I can understand why they gave up on her, and why she was detrimental to the case, because that was repeated many times, and the Rebbe mentioned it, the Shleishim, the Rebbe spoke about that statement that she made. Now, of course, the Rebbe was, was going through the trial. She was a fragile woman, physically, uh, I can't describe her because she's indescribable, but I, 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 I had, thank God I had a yachas with her, and she withstood this attack, this deluge of, of, of garbage and questions, trying to mix her up. When I went back to the to office, I went into the Rebbe, I told the Rebbe exactly what happened, more than I said now, and he said, I told you she'll come through with flying colors. But that was, that was something that I think only the, a woman of her, ca of her, of her type could have, could have withstood. Now then the trial started. I'm not going to talk about the trial. As I said, the, the, the discovery period, the four months that I just uh, outlined and the months, of, the four weeks of the trial uh, uh, engendered thousands and thousands of pages 
Some are just simple testimonies, some are very dramatic, some are very comical to an extent, like Yarmak, the, if you remember the Yarmak, the accountant. And, anyways, anyways, the trial was over after the four weeks. And then we did not, we asked the lawyers, how long do you have to wait? Federal court, three months, six months. We had to wait till Hey Tavis for the, for the, for the uh, decision. Now it's interesting, Hey Tavis was on the Tuesday. The day before Monday, the Rebbe went to the Yeho. While I was at the Yeho, I had a phone call from somebody who told me that they know for sure that the, the Pesach is done, it's written, and it's very good for us. I was from a person who I, I, I felt if I told this to the Rebbe, I won't, I won't be making a mistake. On the way back from the Yeho, I told the Rebbe that I had a call, that the Pesach is ready. It's on the, at the judge's desk. I'll have to pick it up tomorrow, and that it's very good. But I didn't know. Again, the first thing he told me that when we get, I should call up the, the Rebbe and, and notify her. So with that, the trial ended. Tuesday. I drove as fast as I could to Cadman Plaza to the federal court with some people in the car, got a copy of the sack, it was 40 pages. I didn't even read it. I wanted to get back to the Rebbe as soon as possible and not stand and read it for half an hour. So uh, I, I came to 770 and uh, I went into the Rebbe. Somebody in the office told him already that, that that I was coming with Pesach and it was good, so I, I wasn't a surprise to the Rebbe. And uh, I handed it to him and, and I told him that it's good. And uh, I asked him if there'll be a Fabrengen tonight. He says, um, which was absolutely true. And you know what? Before I went out of the room, he asked me, what's Marda Einikel? I had an Einikel born, there was a British a few days before. He wanted to know, and that, per and that time of glory, but still Zebrachen. He asked me how my Enochel is. And throughout the Yoman you find these things that I, 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 can't, I can't tell you the, 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 the consideration, for lack of a better word, that he had for, for people. Well, what happened was they appealed and uh, the appeal took place in the Second Circuit in New York, which is a prestigious uh, high court, no, uh, appeals court, the South. Yeah. And um, I brought with me the Psaac the Psaac from, from, from Judge Sifton. The first one, he talks a lot about the letter of Marx. But uh, it's too long, I don't want to take up that much time to read what he writes about it. But the appeals court, that came down Cheshwin Tovshin Tovshin Mem Ches. Cheshwin Tovshin Mem Ches. A year, a year after the Hey Tavis, Tovshin Mem Zayin. They wrote something about, in their Pesach, it's much shorter than Sifton's. And I just want to read it to you to give you an idea how the judges understood the truth. in the middle of the uh, other things. Based on this reference to the United States Department of Appellant, that means the Tzach, the Sitar Achra, the Tzach Ekeneged, they claim that the Rebbe's only purpose of writing that letter to Dr. Marx was to gain the government's assistance. In effect, they claim that the Rebbe wrote the letter in a disingenuous, even dishonest manner to secure the library, the library safely. In appellant's view, that was. the final line in the letter regarding the Jewish community as the rightful possessors of the library was hyperbole, 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 used only for ulterior motive. That's what this, the, this, the opposition said. And the judge is right, we cannot agree. It simply defies reason and common sense to believe that a religious late leader of the Rebbe's stature, whose life was dedicated to expounding the spiritual values of truth and morality, would deliberately write letters containing misrepresentations regarding the ownership of a valued and to him a sacred national treasure in order to feather his own nest. 
That gives you an idea how Ein Yehudim, Am Gizen, saw through the whole, the whole uh, Shigoyen. I just, I just want to mention a few more things. Uh, during that year, the Ketumat with Svarim, uh, we were also active in trying to retrieve a collection of books that were lost somewhere in Europe. They were taken by the Germans and Yad Russia. They took it from the Germans back to Moscow and they, take, they took them, claim, it, claim to, be, to be theirs, and they're still holding them. Of course, through the years, there were many Stadlers in, and then the, the regime changed and, uh, at that, in, in all these years. And uh, there was a man by the name of Armin Hammer, an industrialist from California, who was Jewish, and he had a very special relationship with the Russian then government. And uh, he, he, he traded from his pharmaceuticals for art. It was a whole shift. I'm not sure what he did. But we asked him to intervene. Shlemy, his office is in Westwood, across the street from Shlemy Kunin's uh, Chabad house. So I got them together, and he had Zechunta Gunuman to try to get retrieved. And in fact, he met at that time with the Minister of Culture. And the Minister of Culture said that you will get the books back because there's precedence for the government to do that. When that came to the Rebbe, the, that idea, the Rebbe said, But then, what Mapeches and different, different, different uh, governments, and uh, they're still in Golis. We hope to get them back. But I want to say, Besiyum, you mentioned yesterday, Rabbi Shemtiv mentioned that after everything was over, after, Seth, after your part was also over, about the uh, deposition that the, that the Rebbe didn't have to do because of you. See, you have a mother, because uh, I don't know how it happened. <laughs> it, 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 it didn't happen. Uh, I, I said publicly that ever, uh, I'm proud to say it. Uh, maybe I'm a Shagetz, and I, I'd love to be a Shagetz if that was, I'd have to be to whatever. The, what, before the, be, during that trial, the Rebbe called me in and told me that if he has to, be, if he has to do, take a deposition, he's ready to take it, but tonight, certain to know him. I said to the Rebbe, with all the chutzpah I could muster, I never, it. it was, out of, believe me, it was a Yiddish Ibn Nefesh. I said, it's not going to happen. But the Kafel called. The Rebbe turned around. Never mentioned again. And it never happened. Maybe he was just waiting to hear something. I don't know what it was. I don't know, I don't know how he did it. You know, it's not my nature. I can yell at my friends, but I, I can't. I couldn't. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm proud. Seth. So we're partners, we're partners. Rabbi Shemta mentioned last night that when everything was over, we went into the Rebbe and told him that it's all over. And he said, everything, it's, it's, it's over. What did the Rebbe say? It's the Vetan Kinnan Zogn Tere. And as you get in, let me decide in Pasha Sashivua, today's Pasha, it says, Vatchi Ruach Yain Kavavihim. What does Rashi say? Shrosa all of Shechina. The Rebbe, we, we didn't, the Rebbe, the Rebbe's a nivis, a Meshur ben Rikven, on of Mekolod Mashal Pane Adoma. The Rebbe was Meshur ben of Ajay. The Rebbe was a non of Pasha. The Rebbe didn't, the Rebbe didn't think his kisi was Bishlemus. It was Ptachas of Shlemus. The Rebbe didn't think he could say, say certain things because of this Golas. But Shrosa all of Shechina, that's exactly what happened to Yanka Bavina. What's it? Then he says, Rav e Yisuf b'ni choy. What does that mean? He wasn't sure mitos e shleima until he found that Yisuf is chai. He found Yisuf chai is mitos e shleima. What does Rashi say? Ravli simcha v'chedvo. Mazari b'chayim afu b'chayim.